There's a video on the channel concerning the IMSA and FIA convergence regulations and what they might mean for the future of the 24 hours of Le Mans. And with the announcement of the Le Mans hypercar rules, I also wondered what it might mean for the future of the GTE category, or GTLM as it's referred to in the US. And on the topic of the hypercar category, there's a great video on a channel called B-Sport, I'll include a link below, which outlines the issues Glickenhaus faced while building their hypercar to compete at Le Mans, something Jim Glickenhaus has waited a long time to be able to do. Glickenhaus had originally planned to use a V6 engine provided by Alfa Romeo, since the Ferrari V8 was too powerful. Then Aston Martin requested a change to the rules to suit the engine they had wanted to use. So Glickenhaus cancelled the agreement with Alfa Romeo and arranged to have Pipo Motors, who manufacture rally engines, build a custom engine for them, at which point Aston Martin pulled out of the hypercar program. So the Alfa Romeo V6 would have been suitable for Glickenhaus after all. And in 2021, there have been some more announcements. In late January, IMSA announced a new GTD Pro class, based on GT3 specifications, to appear in the WeatherTech Championship in 2022. This new GTD Pro will replace the IMSA GTLM class, competing now in its final WeatherTech Championship season in 2021. And then in April, the FIA announced technical regulations for a new electric GT category. The new rules are aimed at giving electric vehicle manufacturers a platform to develop road relevant technology through motorsport. Encompassing both OEM brands and specialist electric vehicle developers that don't have prior internal combustion engine racing experience. Cars will be designed to operate in a similar performance window to engine-powered GT3 cars, but with better acceleration and faster qualifying laps. Manufacturers already involved in the global GT3 formula will be able to deploy the architecture and certain design elements of their existing GT3 race cars and convert them to electric power. And this new platform features many existing technologies carried over from GT3 to keep development costs low, a common theme in motorsport these days. This new electric GT category will include a minimum weight of around 1,500 kilos, around 300 kilos heavier than a GT3 car, and entries will have to be road car based and not a spec monocoque. Manufacturers must use specialized battery pouch cells from French company Zaft, but can then design their own battery and drivetrain with up to four electric motors, and include rear wheel drive or four wheel drive and torque vectoring. Dynamic vehicle control, which automatically adjusts each wheel's torque to improve handling, is also included in the technical rules. And these new regulations are unlike the more restricted Formula E, where the manufacturer engineering options are limited and they must use spec batteries. 0 to 100 km per hour in 2.4 seconds with an estimated top speed of 300 km per hour and a total battery capacity of up to 87 kilowatt hours and a maximum power output under acceleration of 430 kilowatts, which is around 577 horsepower, and with a peak regeneration of 700 kilowatts, in what would be an integral part of race events featuring these electric GT cars. Entering the pits for 700 kilowatts 
of fast charging for up to 60% of battery capacity in around 5 minutes. Each main race would be 40 minutes in length and require cars to complete at least one mandatory fast charging pit stop. And on track here in our factor 2, and in a way the reason behind this video, is the EX0 2021 electric prototype, designed in cooperation with racing driver Mike Rockefeller, the 2013 DTM champion and 2010 Le Mans winner. Developed to support the Racing Concept Cars organization referred to as RCCO, for the RCCO World EX Championship, an eSports racing series for electric prototypes. The RCCO EX0 2021, where the EX stands for Electric Experimental, is powered by a 100 kilowatt hour battery with a power to rate ratio of 1 to 1. So a simulated 1000 horsepower weighing in at 1000 kilos without the driver. And similar to the real world FIA electric GT category spec, this concept electric prototype also supports four wheel drive with a 73% rear torque split and a top speed of over 380 km per hour and capable of 20 minutes of hard racing on a full battery charge. The EX0 is a bit of a beast to drive, so definitely a fun challenge. I'll include a link below to the RCCO World EX YouTube channel if you want to check out their eSports series where real world drivers race against sim racers, including knockout rounds which are interesting to watch given the sheer power the car has. And perhaps something like this might be racing in real world in future but not for endurance racing of course, and which takes us back to the original point, the possible future of the 24 hours of Le Mans, and the ongoing development of an electric hydrogen prototype to be introduced for endurance racing by the FIA in 2024. So some interesting times ahead, the cars will no doubt be faster and quieter too, which some won't agree with and I get the point. But the move away from internal combustion engine powered racing slowly but surely is coming, I guess. That was a two, zero, seven point, zero, two. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe too if you haven't already. And of course, any comments are always welcome. Until next time, thank you.